Hello, uh, in this session of information technology implementation, I want to touch upon a few very important points. Uh, one needs to understand that any in information technology implementation cannot necessarily be a successful implementation. Uh, research and statistics has shown that 72% of all IT projects are either late or over budget or lack the functionality or they never delivered any benefits that they had uh, anticipated. Uh, to begin with, one third of all the money that is spent on information technology uh, software is used to repair botched up projects. Billions are spent each year reworking systems so that they fit the requirements eventually. So in many cases, what uh, we see is that information technology project comes into being, but it never ever gets the right kind of benefits that it's supposed to have in the first place. There have been several instances of botched up information technology projects. May they be the Denver International Airport, um, the Czech Lipop Airport in Hong Kong, uh, the Kuala Lumpur Airport, any kind of an implementation that you look at, the Terminal 5 Airport that uh, was um, opened recently in Heathrow. Uh, and besides that, there are scores and scores of ERP implementations that have gone south. So there are some important implications for uh, the success of information technology and how it can be implemented such that we can reap the benefits. So I had a doctoral student at one time uh, and we asked him to look into a large number of projects such that we could understand factors that could potentially be understood in terms of moving from unsuccessful to highly successful implementations. So Paul Nogolpin went and spent a lot of time talking to different industries, talking to different uh, institutions where information technology implementations had taken place. And he came up with a very interesting model, uh, which suggested that, you know, in net effect, when we talk about success, um, uh, clearly we do need top management support there's absolutely no doubt about it, but moving from unsuccessful to successful implementations, there were a number of steps that had to be uh, taken and some of them collectively highly successful implementations only come into being when there is good understanding of stakeholder intent. If we are unable to understand what the stakeholders needed in the first place, that implementation is certainly never going to be successful. So if there is some kind of a prevalent organization change method that increases the chances of that success or even a willingness to invest in strategic benefits. So, so these are some of the reasons why certain implementations are more successful. This whole notion about a willingness to change and invest in strategic investment benefits has some important bearing. Uh, it moves us from considering information technology investments as a cost center and takes us into the new concept of it adding value to the bottom line and the business. So no longer would an information technology investment would be considered as a drain on the resources. It would actually bring in dollar value and say, tell us that this is the value that a given project is bringing into an organization, into an enterprise. That is a fundamental difference in moving us from a cost center perspective of information technology implementation to a value center implementation perspective. Because if you think about it, any investment that is made in information technology and a project is launched, they're clearly, if we do not have an understanding of the intent, then clearly that project is ill-defined. But associated with the investment objective is also an appreciation of the benefits that that particular investment objective or investment is going to make. So if we have documented and well-listed benefits, then we are in a better position to say where the changes are going to be made, what kind of business changes are going to be made, how are certain changes going to align with a strategic intent and others are not going to align, how can we choose between the right kind of changes. Now, remember, till now I haven't talked about infrastructure. I haven't even touched upon the topic area of what kind of a system are we going to implement. That is where the success comes because IT or IT system is not the major focus here. The major focus here is the investment objective. And in order to accomplish those changes, we can certainly think in terms of uh, what kind of infrastructure it might have, or what kind of a ERP system we might have, or what kind of a 
span of uh, um, um, activities that a given system is going to cover. So those things come later. So clear definition of the intent to get into a system, to get to implement kind of a system and the benefits and the changes that are necessary become very successful, help us in achieving high success in any kind of an implementation. Now, as I was saying, um, high success can be achieved if we have a good understanding of stakeholder intent. But um, if that is not there and there is a comprehensive benefits management plan in place, then it will still be a successful project, but, but it may not necessarily lead to intent management, good intent management being there. Um, when organizations that just focus on benefits without any overarching understanding of um, the investment objective and and careful consideration of stakeholder intent those 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 implementations always fall short of high success um, so in any kind of a given situation there is no doubt we need good benefits management we need a good understanding of benefits but in association with that you need to have a willingness to change and a good understanding of, uh, of the investment objective. Now, in most cases, what we see is in at least half the implementation that we see, they're neither successes or, or nor failures. And those are what I term as moderate successes. Moderate success uh, implementations are those where there was some kind of a planned approach that was used to implement information technology investments. There was some appreciation of stakeholder methods, but there was absolutely no understanding of what the benefits would be. So you, if you are just simply uh, focusing on good planning approaches, um, but you're not necessarily linking those approaches to uh, benefits delivery. Such implementations are uh, moderate successful. They will stay as moderate, su moderate successes, and, and that's about it. If you are not able to focus on any of those things, then clearly uh, such implementations are unsuccessful. There are several significant factors uh, linked with uh, successful IT implementations. So as I have noted uh, before, and I have um, um, alluded to this particular point, the degree to which a change management methodology has been adopted and used on projects is perhaps uh, one uh, common denominator that uh, ensures any kind of success. So any organization which does not have a proper, well-defined change management methodology and any implementation they involve in is certainly not going to be going beyond being unsuccessful. Besides the change management methodology, you also need a very active involvement of senior executives across the life cycle of the project. In many cases, what we have seen is senior executive involvement is just at the initial stages of project initiation, project approval, but they never get involved beyond that into the implementation phases. In such cases, we see that those projects are doomed to begin with, they may not be entirely unsuccessful, but they will certainly not be uh, highly successful. And thirdly, is the extent to which uh, strategic and financial benefits have been or are possible to measure and evaluate. If we are not able to measure those strategic and financial benefits in very quantifiable terms, then those projects lose focus and they lose the um, ownership and commitment from many stakeholders. So any project, there will be intangible benefits, of course, of any implementation, but you have to think in terms of strategic and financial benefits if that implementation has to be successful. And then finally, uh, a poor benefits management process. If the benefit management process has not been understood, then uh, there, is, there is no respect, but it will be an unsuccessful project. Such like projects have been, um, there's so many of them out there where uh, they, they have failed either because uh, of um, the investment objective getting lost uh, or the senior management not having support or uh, they have not been involved throughout the life cycle of the project. One such example that really comes to my mind is that of Nevada DMV. I was quite closely associated with the Nevada DMV project Genesis, which was a several million dollar project which uh, ended up being uh, delayed and, and uh, there was escalation in the cost of that particular project. One of the reasons for its primary failure was that nobody could understand 
what the stakeholders really wanted. There was some um, some understanding in the fact that uh, IBM was not going to renew their contract with the current system, so they had to change. So there was an external factor which was leading them to change. But what eventually happened was because they could not understand what the stakeholders really wanted, um, they ended up coming up with what I call Mickey Mouse requirements. Um, this, the Nevada DMV in the old model was uh, was organized into a licensing and a and a registration division. There were two separate divisions. Uh, they never talked with each other. But what we found was very quickly that um, how are you going to come up with requirements for an organization which does not have a well integrated um, uh, communication between two divisions and and the intent was really to merge the two divisions. So you are going to be re drawing requirements from an organization which is changing as you are coming up with requirements which is very problematic how do you do that that is not a very easy task to accomplish so nevertheless um, some kind of requirements were uh, were defined and um, they were given to the developers to build the system and when the eventual system came senior management was obviously not involved in the ongoing uh, uh, design and build stage of the life cycle and, and when the system was finally implemented, it did not fit the requirements of what there were. There were too many bugs. It had to be abandoned. It had to be delayed and had to be reworked upon. And then finally, after uh, significant cost escalations, it was finally launched. And the primary reason why this all happened was because nobody understood the requirements of the stakeholders. Nobody could map what the current requirements were of the organization and how could those be translated into a computer-based information system. One thing that many people forget in, in, in implementation of systems is they always focus more on the technology implementation but very little on all the other stuff that has to take place in the organization and that is a flaw. Uh, and, that, and, and organizations that do that uh, are disasters waiting to happen. One needs to think in terms of investment objectives and then the benefits and then the change changes that are necessary. And beyond that, then you are really considering what the IT infrastructure should be in order to fulfill the requirements. I hope uh, you enjoyed this particular session on implementing information technology and implementing strategic information systems plan. It's a fairly complex topic area um, and I hope we have a wonderful discussion. Thank you very much.